Hey friends, welcome to this week's video. This time around, we're gonna go over some of the comments that you guys had from the previous Neuroloop video. I know we've had this queued up for a couple weeks now, but there's been a lot of feedback from there and it sounds like there's still some more questions to go over, um, as well as some things that I picked up to really evaluate uh, options for what you can do with your Neuroloops and maybe ways to make them better. The first real thing that seemed to be a trend in terms of the comments was really around loudness. I think some of you all had worked with the Neurophone at some point, and obviously if you had a Gen 1, there's probably some volume issues, because even on my Gen 1s, there's some volume issues that I wish that they, they cranked on that. And people are wondering if that persists through the Neurophones. What I can say is that I haven't had any issues with it. Again, it's gonna depend on your phone and what you think is loud enough. But from my perspective, I think they get plenty loud. Um, let me see if I can get a test run in here. So I don't know if you can hear that, but that's how they sound in their lips at maximum volume outside of the ear. And then what I'll do from here is I'll switch over to the the Jabras and then see how that compares. So overall, I think that they get pr plenty loud. The Jabras do slightly get a little bit louder, but they also get a little bit harsher. So it's a kind of a balance of loud is great, but to me, loud is only great if it sounds good loud. Um, I think you won't have those problems with the neurophones. Um, so I think overall they will meet your need. And that also comes down to the next question around seal. People are wondering how well they fit. Do they really isolate sound? Because I know in my previous review, I mentioned that these were very skinny and they kind of fit differently. However, um, they didn't really have an issue with seal. However, it's just about the fit. So as I recommended in my last video, I would really recommend that you run through all the different size options they come in for. Just make sure that it, the right one fits your need. Um, you know, test out ones that are similar in size and use them throughout a day or two just to really figure out um, if it stays in all day, if it stays in with your activities and really makes your music sound great. So. There's a lot of experimentation, I would say, that comes with getting the neural loops, but I think you'll get a good benefit out of it if you do take that time uh, to get used to them or get familiar with them. We will be getting into other options as we get into the uh, latter half of this review, but let's get on to the next piece that people have been asking about, and that is my overall rank. So my overall rank, of these headphones that I have, so the Jabra 75, sorry, Jabra Elite 75T Actives, the Sennheiser Momentum True Wireless 2s, and obviously the Neurophones. So how would I rank them? It's hard because they all do things differently, but pretty well. Um, but overall use, I would say that the... Overall use, I've been liking the Neurophones recently, or the Neural Loops recently. And I think that's just because of a lot of different things regarding a balance of sound and convenience. Um, so for perspective here, the Jabras are better at connectivity between two devices. This still does well, but you still have to engage an action to do that. The Jabra is a little bit more smart and can hot swap between computer and phone as long as you stop the source on the first device. So that's pretty easy. For this one, you actually have to uh, initiate a connect feature. So it doesn't simultaneously connect to them, but it can be really quickly initiated. And then the TW2s are probably the worst because I actually have to press the earphones and then press connection on the secondary device. So they can't be simultaneously swapped, but it's also the syncing operation is much longer. So from a convenience perspective, the jobbers win, but I still think that this is pretty simple. Um, in, in terms of fit, um, I think the Jabras are a little bit easier. Um, so, so are the, the TW2s. They're a little bit easier to get used to, just out of the box, just throw them in. Um, again, like, like I said, you need some intimate time with the neural loops to get what fits you. And that's really important, but you'll get the benefits once you start playing with the sound. And that's kind of where the next part comes in, 
is that in terms of sound, these all have a distinct signature, um, but they're all against each other. It's hard to say. So for the TW2s, it's a very flat signature and it's something that will work with any genre. Um, so again, this is probably the best sounding in terms of, you know, no color in terms of like, if you really want to flat reference, the TW2s are probably your best bet. The Jabras have a pretty decent sound set. Um, it is a little bit bass boosted. That's something that they pushed in their latest model because people requested more, but it does get sort of unbalanced depending on what you're listening to. So it's something to be cognizant of. And then in terms of the neural loops, because it has that auto acoustic analysis, it's a more fun listen. So I like it more than the Jabra's. And again, it's more fun than the TW2's. So to me, they, it sounds the better and it's just easier for me to get into the vibe a little bit more. These are probably a little bit more versatile across the genres, but the uh, neural loops are, are wonderful in terms of sound. So that's a reason why I keep those around. And then in terms of battery life, I mean, this last 16 hours, so not really an issue getting there throughout the day. This one is uh, five hours, I believe five to six hours on in the earphone, and then you have like four or five more charges in the case. So again, easy to get through the day. This one is supposed to be the same as the Jabra's, but the TW2s have been getting really poor battery life for me. And some people have said that they've gotten better results. However, for me, they don't. <laughs> as long, if I'm using active noise canceling, if I'm using hear through mode, and if, or if I'm using it for conferences, those things die. It dies in like two or three hours. Like it's, it's pretty lame. I'm not going to lie. It's hard for me to justify it because this is so much more money. This is like $120 more than these guys. Um, so I know if you, if you have more thoughts on this or you want to see my full thoughts on this, check the link above, but the TW2s are a wonderful sound. They just don't meet my need for a wireless headphone and they just don't last. So that's the reason why if I'm to rank these at this point in time, the neural loops, are probably my go-to at the moment um, because they do balance convenience and sound in a good way as well as giving me the battery life that i need to make my calls to make my errands to do workouts and everything like that so i just enjoy them more it's also a fact that because they're not true wireless i can actually hang them on my my neck and you know there are times where that's just easier than like pocketing them so if i'm talking to someone i can really just take them off or you know if i don't want to have uh, them in my ears, I can just hang them on my neck and then conveniently put them back in. So again, that's just like a, a hidden benefit, I guess, of the not truly wireless experience, but these, all that together kind of makes it why this is my go-to on the daily so far. In terms of other issues that people have found, um, I know that uh, we had a friend on, on the comments that he got them as a result of my review. And I think he had some frustrations with it. So um, the first one that I saw was the charging cable. So this is something that has been an issue for Neuroloop since the, the get-go. They've been overheating for sources that had high wattage. Um, I haven't personally had this issue. I've been able to throw it in some pretty high uh, volt uh, situations and I haven't had any issues. But other people have had, you know, overheating and things like that. And that's the reason why they're sending out new cables. So I haven't received mine yet, but they're supposed to come out. So hopefully that will resolve it. The new cables will have a red mark. So you know which one's the real one. And then these will be discarded. Um, I'll probably be able to give you guys a, a quick update in a future review about how that performs. But this one's been working for me so far, but there has been enough cases where they've had to recall them, not really recall them, but replace them. So they're sending everyone who's purchased a Neuraloop new cables. So it's just something to keep out for. And then also along with that, I would say that there are some growing pains that Neuraloop's trying to figure out. And what I mean by that is that they have released a, a product that got delayed a little bit and um, the landscape has changed, obviously. Um, I think they've done a good job about implementing what they have, but I think they just need to think a little bit more about the overall use of a wireless headphone. Um, so I think there are things that they're trying to improve on. Um, we got we, everyone that was a Neuraloop user got an email, I believe, from Luke. And he essentially told us that there are certain things on their top priorities to run down and improve. 
One of them is, is dial connectivity. And that's something that I've personally felt where the dials sometimes malfunction or not malfunction, but they just don't are not responsive. And that's usually when the battery gets a little bit low. Um, so as I start getting to like 20%, I'll notice that the dial doesn't run or my, or my um, tap doesn't register. And it's always on the left ear cap, it's never on the right. So I'm not exactly sure what that is. Maybe there's not getting enough power, but it is something that they've recognized. Um, they're also looking into introducing more taps and other features like that. Um, so I think a lot of people just wanna not be able to reference their phone. And while the taps and dials are really awesome in terms of functionality, there could be more. Like I've changed the way that I've configured mine just because there's that limitation. So before I was uh, start pause and volume and social mode and uh, social mode on and off real quick. So I actually changed the social mode on and off to the next track just because I, I like to you know, shuffle through my music while I'm working out without having to look at my phone. So I can still you know, dial it in, but it's just not as quick as it would be for a button press. So hopefully they introduce those additional presses uh, to allow us to really just use the earphones for control. And that's, I think, what most people want out of a wireless set. So looking through some of the other things that they're looking at is improving the on and off functionality. And I think that's something that's probably key. So that's something that hasn't improved with me, you know, updating the firmware or, you know, getting more time with it. It will stay connected. It's just, unless you dis dis disconnect it from the Bluetooth signal, it, it will just stay connected. Just, Cause like the thing is it uses proximity to tell you when it's in and out. So even when my headphones are completely opposite of each other, they'll still stay on. So I've had these things stay on at night um, and have like a low battery in the morning. So that's not ideal at all. Um, so I think they're looking into improving that. And again, I, as I mentioned in my last review, I appreciate the desire to be intuitive here, but we just need an on and off switch. Like give us another button press, allow us to turn it on and off. It'll just, you know, it'll save us so much more time because there's no charging case to really just shut it off and like give it, you know, a housing to charge and initiate a shut off. We'll just need some kind of button press or gesture that will allow it to be forced off so that we don't have to deal about with battery issues on the long term. Voice calls, people had mentioned that there's gonna be, there's some issues uh, like coming in robotic or not clear. I haven't had those issues. The only times that I've really had it, again, from my last review was if I was using Microsoft Teams. Um, and again, it's not every single time, but that's the only time that I've ever had someone complain about how it sounded. Using phone calls, using Discord, using Skype, <laughs> using things like that. Like all of it seemed to be fine. But uh, once we got onto Microsoft Teams, people thought I was too far away. I didn't sound clear. So I'm not sure what's up with that, but apparently other people are having issues with voice calls. So they're looking to improve that. So seal seems to be an issue that they're trying to work on. I'm guessing it's just because those ear tips are quirky and it requires some acclimation to get the right fit. However, Neuroloop doesn't want you to be abandoned in this, so they are implementing something that they have on the neurophones, which will essentially help you with your fit. It'll tell you if it's not secure and make sure that you adjust it so that you get the best experience out of your headphones. I believe this is something that they've already implemented because I did have uh, a prompt telling me that my, my headphones were set up wrong. So I think they've already pushed that through firmware, which is nice. However, that new feature gets into the last part of this review kind of because these recommendations to get a better seal are going to impact that function. So it's something that I will tell you a little bit more about, but this whole video got started because someone asked me about third party tips and I thought it was a really interesting idea and I didn't have much you know, research on what would, what would fit. Um, so I just used what I had out of my hands of the Jabra's and the TW2's. Both of them fit fine. Um, the Jabra's did sound a little bit more uncontrolled and the bass was a little bit more wobbly while the TW2's worked fine. Gave them a cool little Oreo effect, but it also just didn't mess with the integrity of the sound, so that was nice. However, it wasn't a recommended tip, obviously, with, from Neuroloop. They do have four. The four recommendations they have are the 
ALXCD foam tips. I picked the ones that were the 65T variation. Also the Isolation Series 400 and 500 series and the Comply Premium Tips True Grip. And for that one, I picked the Sennheiser uh, TW2 set. Something to keep in mind here is when you're looking at these third-party tips is that they are all foam. This is different than everything we've seen in the True Wireless that we've reviewed thus far because everything is silicone. Silicon is great because it is convenient. It's easy to jam in your ear and you know adjust on the fly. And it's also sweat resistant and durable. So while your fit may not be perfect and you may have some seal issues, it's probably the most convenient material for ear tips. The benefit you get out of the foam ones are that your seal is gonna be tremendously better. It'll improve your sound, especially in terms of isolation and bass. And you probably have less slipping out issues but there are downsides to it as well in terms of the fact that they're less durable than silicon. They will absorb liquid over time and they take a little bit more time to adjust because of the way the foam tips go into your ear. You have to flatten them down, stick them in your ear and wait for the tips to expand again. Again, your seal is going to be much better, but it might take you a little bit longer to do those adjustments or put them in initially. So that's just something to be cognizant of, especially if convenience is one of your biggest value adds. Another thing to talk about about these foam tips is that Neuraloop does recommend that you pick the versions that don't have the mesh protectors. And what those mesh protectors do essentially is just protect it from wax, protect it from sweat, protect it from liquid so that the actual earphone itself does not get damaged. However, the Neuraloops already have that mesh built into the headphone um, and they are replaceable as you saw in my previous review. But I think they don't want you to pick the additional protection because it probably messes with the integrity of the sound. So just to make sure that you won't have any issues, pick the ones that are guardless. <laughs> but in terms of what they recommend, we can basically run through the entire gamut. So the last week I have tested one per day, running it through my normal errands, running it through work, running through workouts, and just making sure that they hold up in terms of a comfort factor, in terms of a sound factor, in terms of a don't slip out of my ear when I'm working out factor, just making sure that it, it fits the everyday use case without much hassle. So I'm gonna cut away to a bunch of B-roll, about me running through each headphone and I'll let you know what I think about them. So on the first day, I tried the Comply 500 series. The ear tips were extremely comfortable. They did have a little bit of grip on them and they fit snugly into my ear. There weren't really much complaints about it. I did notice that there was a better sound isolation and the active noise canceling worked a little bit better with those in. In terms of daily tasks, I could do my everyday stuff. I could run and get errands and packages and stay on calls and no one really saw any degradation in my voice and it maintained uh, my microphone capabilities. So nothing really was impacted from that perspective. The sound again was a little bit better because of the isolation. Definitely heard a little bit more bass in it and it held up pretty well in, the, in a workout. Um, I did play around with the different sizes a little bit just to make sure it was right. Um, but overall, the large ones fit me just fine and there wasn't much issue with things slipping out. On the next day, I used the 400 series. And if you're asking what the difference is, is that there is a slightly different uh, orifice size or where the ear hole is. So the 500s have a slightly larger hole while the 400s have a slightly smaller hole. The 400 series was very much the same in terms of the setup. It was comfortable in ear. It worked pretty much the same in terms of everyday errands. Didn't really have much issues with it slipping out. However, I did notice that there was some issues with the fit so that the 400s was when I started getting those issues with Neuralip telling me my fit wasn't secure. Um, I also did notice that they kind of stuck out of my ear a little bit more than the other headphones. So, or the other ear tips. So that might be something with that. I am not, not sure, but I started having issues with the 400 series because of the fact it was constantly telling me that there was a fit issue. When I was working out, I did also notice that my right ear cup was coming out. So 
as I got more sweaty, as I got more heated in terms of my workouts, the 400 would slip out um, and I'd have to adjust it, which was a little bit more annoying because again, it's a little bit more setup time than the silicone. Overall, it wasn't the best one. That's probably not the most ideal one out of all of them, especially because of the prompts that it did with the neuro loops. On the third day, I used the ALX CDs. Again, that's a terrible name. <laughs> it's hard to remember. And these ones were probably the worst of the bunch. So to me, it was a really big struggle to get these to work for me. Um, they just didn't fit in as well as the other complies. And I was having issues and having to adjust them frequently. So this is just even on just like normal everyday tasks. I just had to adjust them. The seal wasn't as nice. The sound wasn't as nice. So the L ALX CD is probably not the best way to go on this. And I really saw the issues when I was starting to do workouts too. As the, the more I was jumping, um, the more intense the workout got. And just It was just uncomfortable in comparison. And I, I guess it shouldn't have been, but it, it was. It's just, I guess they just don't expand or they're not as firm as the complies. So again, I would probably not recommend these if you are looking at these. And then this finally gets back into the fourth day, which I use the True Grips. And for me, these were the best ones. They were able to expand more than the others, I think. And that grip does help. Like it's, it's noticeable in the ear. Um, I didn't really have any issues with these ones. I didn't get fit issues with the neural loop technology. I didn't have microphone issues. I didn't have comfort issues and I didn't have to adjust them as much. So my everyday tasks were really easy. My calls in the morning were very simple. Um, I could wear them for long extended periods of time without any discomfort and they held up tremendously well for my workouts. And in fact, I did a couple workouts that day just because I didn't really feel the burden of them as I did with the other ones. So for me, I think this is probably the way to go in terms of using the True Grip ones. And again, you can get the 65T version or the Sennheiser Momentum version, but just based on my personal ear tips or ears, the True Wireless version of the Comply True Grips were the best in terms of performance and overall usage. So hopefully that helps you kind of direct your decision. I'm not gonna say that my experience is how you should approach this because everyone's ears are different, but you might wanna try a couple and see which one works best for you. Again, if I wanted to help you with your decision-making, probably go with the 500 series or the True Grip series. They were more consistent across the board and it didn't really affect anything. Other things to note here are that you should probably pick the ones that are multi-size. So there's a bunch of different options out there where you can just get all smalls, all mediums, or all larges. But I recommend getting the ones that have the packs of three different sizes so that you can play around with them a little bit more. Um, again, like for me, I'm starting to realize that my ears are a little bit different <laughs> in terms of the, the, the ear hole. So like it's good to have the various sizes so you can play around with it more and really get the fit and isolation that you require. So overall, you can get third party tips. They're pretty, you know, they, they work with a lot of them, but the four that they recommend, the, the True Grips of the 500s will do you well. Um, and they'll probably improve the sound and overall experience. So I hope you guys check them out. Um, I'll leave links to all this stuff in the uh, below, but that's basically everything I had in terms of additional things that people are wondering about the neural loops. Again, I appreciate you guys are sticking around. Again, subscriber count's keeping up, which I like. And I appreciate that you guys are so active on the comments. Again, it's making it really easy for me to make new videos as well as I love engaging with you guys and starting up those dialogues. And again, I'm sorry if um, I don't get to your comments right away. Again, the reasons why that might be is because I don't understand the technology that you're asking about or I don't understand, like I don't have you know, a lot of knowledge around it, like JVCs, headphones and stuff like that. Or I guess I just, I want to also apologize if, if you made a decision, a purchase decision and you think that I steered you wrong. And I can see how that might happen. I've read it in the comments a little bit and I'm sorry, but this is just like my personal opinions. 
I'm definitely gonna help you guys like research and try new things to make that experience better. But I'm not gonna be 100% correct and I'm not gonna be 100% tailored towards what your expectations are or what your personal sound experience is. So I'm gonna just do my best based on what I can have, what I have around me and what I'm hearing. But I will be doing my best to, you know, make sure that you guys make the best purchase decisions. So thank you guys for sticking around. I know that this one took a little bit more longer than expected, but I appreciate that this came from the community and that it was a fun little exercise to do. So as you watch these videos again, please consider subscribing, liking, doing all the things that you normally do on a video that you like and love. And as always, appreciate you. Peace.